Yo, what's up guys? Mike from Junk 90s back at it today. Got a quick pickups video for you. Uh, adventures in dealing, if you will. Uh, no, we're not a crystal level yet, but you know, a boy can dream. Uh, this is a fun one. I replied to a listing the other day where the seller had 1977 Topps Star Wars cards. Uh, and me loving 70s stuff as well as my usual 90s, uh, I had to know more. So I drove out there uh, to another part of New England, not my home of Boston. Had to drive a little bit for this uh, and took a look. So uh, this is what we ended up with, uh, a Series 2 and a Series 5 Star Wars 1977 Topps uh, complete set with stickers as well. Um, the 1977 Star Wars set is a gorgeous set, um, especially as movie cards go. This is about as good as it gets. Uh, they did a phenomenal job on these. They were released in five series. Uh, blue Borders, those iconic ones, the iconic Blue Borders are Series 1, clearly uh, didn't have those here. Uh, that's the one where like the Luke Skywalker card goes for like 25k or whatever in a 10. Like that thing gets crazy. Um, that one's ridiculous. I would I would love to buy a blue <laughs> series one. That one's so iconic, but uh, the seller didn't have one unfortunately. I've never really had the opportunity to purchase one of those anyway, but I would love to. Uh, but series two is red, uh, series three is yellow, series four is green, series five right here is orange. Um, that's the other one we have here. Uh, each set is 66 cards. Uh, 11 stickers uh, for a total of 330 cards in that five series set and 55 stickers. So like I said, um, as movie cards go, these these are either the best or one of the best. Um, it's one of the most iconic films of all time, uh, made by the best card producer of the era. Um, it has a distinctly like late vintage feel of the cardboard. Uh, some people say I disagree. Uh, some people say that 70s cardboard feels cheap, but like I love the feel and texture it has. Um, very underrated in my opinion. Uh, the differing border colors for each of these series also is a very nice touch in my opinion. Um, I also love, love that these were released in series. Um, Topps was done doing that, like releasing in series for baseball by like the mid 70s, so it's nice to see that here. Uh, to me, series releases, like releasing the set as like series one, two, three, four, five, six in pieces is like a key hallmark of, you know, vintage cards. You know, like during a baseball season, kids would get a new series like every month. Like they'd have new cards to chase and different players, new subsets. And it's, it's such a cool thing that like I never, like I'm a 90s kid. I never got to take part in that as a collector. They just like really just like released the whole, like they'd release it in two series sometimes. Like you, you didn't really care two, one or two series for me when I was a kid. Didn't really like, it was nothing I cared about, nothing I chased. Um, so like I love, <clears throat> uh, so I'm like a little bit like, oh, you know, it's when I see this to me, it's just like a very cool thing that I never got to take a part in um, as a kid when I was, uh, as a collect, as a kid collector, I just never got to take a part in that, the series thing. So I love, um, I kind of love how that, how that happens and uh you know how that you know affected collecting and kids experiences of this stuff in the hobby back in the day um design wise love these things very simple uh you know nice solid colors around the whole thing uh just like a nice border design frames the picture very well uh you know i got the caption and this uh i i love this starburst right here um i think they look so cool and i don't know if this is the first time tops did this anywhere i don't know with the uh with that starburst but um if it is um it was a bit of a trendsetter it's not the only time they've used that kind of starburst um they use it on 1981 82 tops basketball um which again i think is one of the best basketball card designs tops ever did which is sad because this was the last time they would make car basketball cards until like 1992 uh but you know there's some clear similarities between these things like uh just a nice solid border um framing the card and those those nice starbursts that they have kind of like in the in the bottom left so i mean these i i love those designs um i think tops did just a great job with a lot of this stuff back in the late 70s mid late 70s and into the early 80s but um yeah i think you know another thing about these that i love and i think it's just you know a hallmark of what tops would do design wise back in the day is that these cards are just very very colorful um that was a hallmark of 1960s and 70s tops releases especially mid 70s for baseball from like 1974 and after tops just made very colorful cards uh and they really don't anymore um but they used to and it shows like 1975 tops baseball is probably the most collected of any tops baseball set going back through the 1960s 
and challenges some of those like iconic iconic 1950s sets of course it's not like up to the level of like 1952 and 1953 but like it, it challenges maybe even like up to 56 but it challenges in popularity and collector significance um a lot of those 50s sets so you know to me it's it's unfortunate that and i i blame a lot I'm, you could i mean they really weren't doing colorful type stuff like this like with like you know these solid base color stuff and you know color combinations uh even in you know the 2000s but you know i blame also a lot of the fact that it never happened again on just the fact that these card companies have had monopolies and they haven't really had a need to attract collectors to their products because if you want baseball cards you only got one option uh so you know that to me is a bit unfortunate but you know at the same time they didn't have competition back then but they just seemed more eager to try to you know do do things that were really eye appealing and really took some creativity and at times some risks that people might not like but to me it shows i wish they would bring back some of the more colorful stuff and i don't mean colored refractors and parallels i think those are we're just like we are parallel to death at this point like i can't i can't take any more of that stuff but um i love what they what they used to do um you know back in back in the 70s especially so if you're if you're unfamiliar guys go look at you know 1975 tops 1976 tops uh, are two of my favorite sets of all time 75 the colors in that are incredible if you like lay them out it looks like a candy store it's incredible and then 76 is a little more subtle but there's just so much color going on with that and they it was it was a thing that they did a lot of in in that decade that i think uh gets lost over time but again love this stuff we're talking about top, we're talking about star wars here and i can get back into baseball but you know i love i love what they did with this set and the five, i wish i could show you all five series at once because they look incredible next to each other when it's like blue red yellow green orange they look they look phenomenal um but the eye appeal like i said on these are amazing so yeah gorgeous cards simple designs clean clean stickers didn't even get to these yet these are gorgeous too um i would show you the red ones the series two ones but i actually sold those ones already um that one went very fast uh but like these stickers are just like you know they're capturing very you know cool iconic moments from uh from the movie so it's uh and they're just like a very cool design and like it kind of like has this frame it's almost like a you know a camera uh what do you call it uh it's almost like the camera reel like right there so it's it's just very cool stuff and uh i i think everyone can agree when they see this that this this is one of the best releases and best sets of movie cards that anyone has come up with so um yeah so <clears throat> anyway pick these up uh i'm thinking about going out and getting more uh, he did have a few that we couldn't come to a deal on but i think i might go out again and try to pick up um the couple others that he has um i'll let you all guess what i paid for in the comments um right now on uh you know in terms of like hints you know i think i'll make a i'll make a fine profit i'm gonna make a i'm selling this stuff anyway i doubt i'd make a killing but i think i'll make a you know fine profit um right now online you can smash the bin on like a series two complete set in your mint condition for like so you can get this one for like 75 um series five there actually aren't very many available i was a little bit surprised by that um i don't know what the print runs were for this uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they made fewer of the late series than they did of the earlier series and it became kind of like a high number ish thing where the print run was lower i don't know though um another thing to leave in the comments if you have knowledge of that if you're aware but like you know 60s cards and early 70s and 50s you know when they released them in sets people always talk about the high numbers if you're unfamiliar with vintage and the high numbers were the last sets because it was transitioning out of the baseball season into you know football and you know people weren't quite as interested a lot of the time in baseball cards so they wouldn't sell as much so they printed fewer of them so that's why the later series are often called the high numbers excuse me are the high numbers they're high numbers in the set but they're like kind of noted and known for their rarity because tops was printing fewer of those so if that happened here where series five was produced a little less than series two i, I totally believe that but i i don't know i'm just kind of like hypothesizing based on the fact that there's fewer of these on um uh, on ebay and they're charging the the only i think the lowest bin for that set is like 200 or 250 and i was like oh my god like how is that so much more than this and that's an idea i had i, I don't know it could just be some of those were cheap and they sold and you know the ones that are remaining I, I really don't know and i don't know what i'd get for this but um so if anybody knows about that please uh yeah please let me know because uh definitely an interesting quirk about possibly what they were doing with the prints in this set so i think i'll make a nice set nothing major these are near mint sets so they don't always have like a ton of grading potential uh because you need nines and tens to make money on the grading side on this um, but I think there's still like a handful in here that might be worth it. Um, I mean, here's, here's a couple that, uh, I'm thinking about doing. I do have to re-examine them though, because the first time I went through these, um, I 
thought the top bottom centering was top border to this copyright line right here. Like I'll try to get it close so you guys can read it, but it's just like, you know, let's get a little blurry, pull it back out. But it just says 1977, 20th century, Fox Film Corp, all rights reserved. So I had thought that it was like this line to that, or just like the bottom of the font to the border would be, this looks orange in the camera, this is the red. <laughs> this is the orange, this is the red. I don't know if that's tricky to see. Um, they're actually kind of similar color, aren't they? But, um, but yeah, I thought it was that to that. But what I've been seeing on here is that like, or from like reading uh, some chat threads is that it might actually be this weird kind of like three border thing that PSA measures and they might be ignoring uh, the copyright line. So it seems like on most of the tens, uh, they want this border and this border and this border to all be between like a 45, 55. Um, it's almost like left, right, top centering. So they all need to be within that band. So I need to go back and check these to make sure I'm not just like, because I was, I was initially measuring 50, 50, 50, 50, like top, bottom, left, right, like we normally would. Like if you were to do this Larry Bird card, you know, top, bottom, left, right, easy. But I, I need to go back and redo these ones or just like re-examine them quickly and make sure that like I'm actually getting these borders correct and then do a little more research. But um, but yeah, we'll see. And I think I'll probably do, I mean, I'll show you guys in a future video what I'm doing, um, you know, a grading preview because these will be included in there. Um, I've got some other 70s stuff to throw in. So I'll probably just, I would love it. I was hoping PSA would do a special for September on the 70s, but they just did one a couple months ago. So I'm not surprised if they don't do that for a while. So I might just have to send these in at the regular, uh, the regular amount. I have some football, 70s football that I want to send in um, from this huge box that I bought and I'm unclear if you can mix in movie cards with sports I really I'm not sure I've never tried to do it um, I thought that you could not but the distinction they usually make is like trading card game and this is not a TCG this is these are movie cards so you might be able to send them in together I'd like to be able to because that would definitely allow me to bulk up the submission a little bit um, and get under, you know, get to like the value bulk section. But the other thing is like those submissions are taking so long right now. Like I have two vintage and one modern one sent out. And, like the modern ones just like lap the vintage stuff. They go through, they go through PSA right now anyway, much, much faster, the modern stuff than the vintage. So the, the initial vintage one that I sent in is getting, it's over three months now. Um, and it's still not through the QA checks, so it might be like a four month door to door thing, could be even longer. So I'm trying to wait for those to get back so I don't just get like flooded with bills or something if they, uh, or with uh, grading fees if they all of a sudden have them ready. So, anyway, real pumped about this, man. This is a gorgeous set. I, I can't get over it, and it's so fun to like, you know, have these and be able to decide what you're going to do with them and uh, what to send a grading, what to, you know, just like list as a nice near mint set. And uh, it's just, it's a cool, it's a cool opportunity to have, especially with like such an iconic movie and a beloved property. Um, it's always cool to be able to do stuff like this. So anyway, that's the video for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did. Um, like I said, I'll, be, I'll give you guys some updates, especially if I get, you know, back out there and buy more. So that's it. Hope you all had fun. See you guys soon. Smash that like, smash that subscribe, and I will talk to you all later. Peace.